By the end of the Second World War, the world was anything but peaceful. Contrary to the tranquility that most desired, this era was marked by the enormous momentum of developments in heavy machinery, especially in the military field. The emergence of these new combat solutions seemed more like an attempt to continue the war than a peaceful withdrawal from the conflict. At the same time, the tension between the Allied nations became the ideal breeding ground for the creation of new weapons, more and more powerful and destructive, that would help persuade the combative intentions of the rest of the nations. This in turn boosted the development of even more advanced military vehicles than those seen in the conflict, resulting in the creation of trucks like the legendary Maz 543. Born in the cradle of military developments after the Second World War, the Maz 543 was designed and manufactured by the Minsky Automobilny Zavod plant in modern-day Belarus. This plant was recognized from its beginnings for providing the most robust vehicles for the Soviet Army, being specialists in the construction of monstrous four-axle, all-wheel drive trucks intended primarily for towing large loads. These models, known as the Maz 535 and Maz 537, were quite modern vehicles for the world standards of the time, as they had features like self-locking differentials, power steering, and an independent suspension system. At that time, it was possible to state that the trucks from Minsk were light years ahead of other Soviet models, which is why they were undoubtedly chosen for a new, very special project. At the end of the 1950s, Maz was awarded a contract to build a heavy truck, with the intention of surpassing any Soviet unit ever seen before. Based on components from the old 537s, the first prototype was completed in 1962, being officially presented during the October Revolution Parade in 1965 under the name Maz 543 Hurricane. This gigantic vehicle, which depending on the model could reach 11.6 meters long, 2.9 meters wide, and 2.6 meters high, made other all-terrain models of the time, such as the Kras 255, look like children's toys. In addition to its empty weight of 23 tons, an almost 20-ton payload had to be added, achieving a gross vehicle weight of approximately 43 tons. The Belarusian monster could move thanks to its D12A525A engine capable of generating 525 horsepower and 2,206 newton meters of torque. Surprisingly, some data suggests that this vehicle was particularly good in terms of fuel efficiency, needing only 80 liters for every 100 kilometers traveled. Although it is not even close to the efficiency of a Toyota Corolla, at that time the fuel shortage was not a problem at all, so thinking about the price of diesel was not something the engineers needed to take into account. This engine was combined as standard with a three-speed hydromechanical transmission, which in turn was coupled to a two-speed transfer case. With this, power could be transmitted to all four axles, achieving an impressive 8x8 traction that allowed it to overcome practically any obstacle. In addition, this truck was designed to be able to operate in temperatures between 50 and minus 40 degrees Celsius because it was intended to be deployed in all kinds of terrains and conditions. However, one of the main features that distinguished the Maz 543 from its predecessors was its split cabin. The reason for this peculiar design decision is due to multiple factors, all stemming from the fact that this military truck was developed with the objective of serving as a missile carrier needing that free space in the center of the truck to house and deploy R-17 missiles, also known to NATO as the Scud-B. Because of this, it was essential to consider some factors during its development, such as weight distribution, achieving better stability by placing both the cargo and most of the components in a distributed manner between both sides of the truck. Likewise, this decision to have two cabins revolved around three important factors in the military field, redundancy, space, and visibility. The military is truly obsessive about redundancy. The idea is that each of the critical systems can have a backup, since if one cabin becomes unusable due to damage in combat or from an accident, the other cabin can immediately take full control. This is a principle that is also applied in areas like aviation, where pilots share duplicate controls. Something just as important to consider is space, since preparing a missile of this magnitude is a task that requires the intervention of several trained soldiers who must be on board. Having two cabins not only increases the space for the crew, but also for more control equipment and tools. 
As for visibility, having a huge missile sticking out in the front makes it impossible for a driver in a single cabin to see what is happening on the other side of the vehicle. If a ditch or an obstacle to be avoided is right on the blind spot side, a single driver would have no way of preventing an accident of that type. Thus, by having two cabins, lateral visibility improves in such a way that the risk of blind maneuvering is reduced. Similarly, many of the outstanding qualities make sense when you understand what these trucks were really designed for. Specifically, the independent suspension system allowed the deployment of these ballistic missiles in rugged areas, without the fear that the payload itself would suffer damage on the journey. Over the years, the progressive evolution of this model into new versions, along with a government decree from the Soviet Union proposed in 1966, led these units to begin having more purposes outside of the military. Specifically, the MAZ plants were forced to allocate between 5 and 10% of their monthly truck production to non-military needs. With this, models such as MAZ 7310 emerged, whose changes focused on the removal of all specialized equipment, as well as the integration of more robust suspensions and wider tires. Despite the constant evolution and launch of new variants, almost all of the civilian models remained in the prototype phase, simply because they failed to establish themselves for use outside of the military. The reason for this is simple. The Belarusian trucks were too large, expensive to operate, and not necessarily outstanding in terms of performance. However, during the following decades, some units that were adapted to be used for special tasks stood out. These enormous trucks were generally used as transporters for oversized loads of up to 300 tons. In such cases, additional fuel tanks were installed, with which they achieved a range of up to 1,500 kilometers. Likewise, Ukrainian cranes were mounted on some trucks, with a load capacity of 25 to 40 tons. Although without a doubt the most unusual variant of the MAZ was the AA-60, adapted to serve airport fire brigades. This one had a tank with a capacity of up to 12,000 liters of water, also integrating all the specialized firefighting equipment, including water cannons powered by an independent 180 horsepower engine. Although an AA-70 model even came to exist, its low maximum speed of only 70 kilometers per hour meant that they were replaced by newer designs that met international standards. Tailored to the military needs of an era in which peace seemed more like a latent intention to continue the war, the Maz 543 became an icon of Soviet military engineering, largely due to its enormous size, its power, but above all to its peculiar double cabin design. Although the Soviet Union itself tried to preserve this peculiar design, seeking civilian applications in which to integrate it, the unstoppable evolution was what finally caused its disappearance. Even so, the Maz 543 left an indelible legacy in automotive history as a symbol of the Cold War and an example of ingenuity applied to the most peculiar military needs.